Hello. This demo will show how the probate pleading works. I'm making this demo specifically in response to a client request. So if it sounds like I'm talking to someone, I am. Uh, but regardless of that, it will give anyone a good idea of how our probate pleading specifically and pleadings in general work. So I'm just going to create a probate pleading and this is off our quick docs ribbon. We have a handful of pleading types. Here's probate. Basically it's fill in the blanks. So let me put a little data in here. Alright, I put a little data in. Just a couple things to know. Many of these uh, have items on a list that you can pick from or you could type whatever you want. This is the way we do it by default, but we can change it around to match exactly how you like it. For example, I noticed you didn't have a title and it just said in Ray the. So we can have it do that if that's what you'd like. Uh, here's all this information and then we put the title here. Here you could say copy title to footer or you can type whatever you want in there. And I believe your firm requested to not have the checkbox so just have it automatically copy it. So we can do that as soon as you leave here. It fills that in. But you could of course change this to be whatever you want. You can choose the office if you have multiple offices and then pick whichever attorney should be authors. If you want just one to be in the signature block you can select their name. And then there are some other options like polling co-counsel, what type face and font you want. We can have this default to what you want, but let people make choices if they want something different. Oh, and then whether or not you want your firm name in the pleading paper. I will leave the firm name off. You can see when it creates it, the way we have it set up, it's pulling the information from the caption here, but that is optional, however you would like it set up. Now in the, this one we have some very simple one, two, three type numbering. So you can see as people are typing along, you'll just keep getting the next number. We have formatting set up. So there's body text style and other styles. And as part of the macro package, we have the styles that people use most frequently collected here. So let me just throw some text in here and I'll show you what some of these styles do. So body text uh, is already on here. I just put it on. It looks like this. Um, other styles, you might need to do a quote. So we have a style for that. After a quote, you might want text that starts at the margin. We have a style for that. Notice I'm in between the numbers. This is kind of a training issue. There's a keyboard combo you can press to drop down a line and we can put a button on the ribbon for you as well. There are several under pleadings, different macros that will work in different pleadings. So adding cross actions, although that probably wouldn't be for a probate, uh, but inserting things into the pleading, declaration, verification, proof of service, etc. Different things you do. Hash marks will draw the slashes from where your cursor is to the bottom of the page. I'm turning show height off and on by the way if you wonder why it's appearing and disappearing. I'm doing that on the keyboard. Creating a judge's order from the pleading that you're in. That would probably be a state or district pleading. Table of contents and table of authorities. This goes with our outline numbering, which I'll show you here quickly. Whole bunch of things for different discovery that you might need to do. Changing the title. Now we don't have the uh, case number in the footer here, but I can have it put that in for you. We just have the name. Um, with the change of title, you can change what it says wherever you want it to be. So the one that goes in the cap on the caption page does not necessarily have to match the one in the footer, but it will go through and update those for people through all the footers. So if you have multiple sections and different first page turned on and off in the document, that's okay. All right.
some macros for page numbering, adding, removing the firm name, some different stamps like this little draft stamp will let you say. Oh, sorry, that was the firm name. I went, I meant to click Add Stamp. It will know who you are, which stamp, what time, puts it up. Then if someone else comes along and clicks Add Stamp, it'll give them the next draft number and it'll put their name, whatever they have set up for their computer. And so if you have it printed out, you can see what draft it was and you can remove that at any time. Clear Links just turns any hyperlinks into plain text. Update the shell lets you get back in there, but that brings the dialog boxes back and you could make changes to anything you want. Maybe you now have a date and time that you want to put in here, and it will rebuild it. So that's the basics of what we already have set up, and of course we can customize that to do exactly what you want it to do. For the numbering that we were discussing, let me just, I'm just going to get rid of all this text for a minute because it doesn't really work. There's simple numbering like we have here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's nothing special. We do have styles set up for that. Let me switch this to body text. But a lot of times you want to do an outline in this type of pleading or another type. And for that, we have quick numbers. And so here you can choose an outline. Now I have a whole bunch of them here. I know that you just wanted one or two available. So we can just remove anything that you don't want and have just the ones you do want here. I'll just pick this one right here. Let's say this is the one you decide you want to use. I'll do this one. Now that it's set up, these 1 through 9 numbers here are the levels of the outline. So if I have my cursor here and I press 1, it makes it level 1 of the outline. You can see it brings in whatever formatting we want. All caps, bold, underline, Roman numeral 1. By default it will switch to non-numbered body text paragraphs or um, now if you're typing along, let's say I'm here and I want level 2, click the button or on the keyboard, you press Alt 1 for level 1, Alt 2 for level 2, and so on. So you're going along, you get the idea. This text is already here, I'll just put some outlining on it. There's some more level 2. Let's say this is level 3. Now that probably has uh, keep with next on it so it jumped to the next page so I might come here go to pleadings and put my little slashes in if I want that. Let's say level 2 here and there's one more level 2 and then maybe a little bit more text. So you see you could put the formatting for the outline on as you're typing along or if the text is already there you can add it at any time. So you might be going in and cleaning up after someone else too. Alright, that's good. Now what if we want a table of contents? And let's say we also want a table of authorities, but we'll just make one up real quick. Let's say this is a citation, my idea of a citation. I'm going to mark this, so the macro package will not mark for a table of authorities for you, but it will run it, and the benefit of that is if you've done the marking already, it will put it in with the page numbering, so you're not dealing with the section breaks and setting up the page numbering, which can be a major hassle. So I will put my cursor right here. And let's say I want that table of contents. Just click the button, table of contents and table of authorities. We'll put them both in, say OK. And there we are. There's our table of contents. Here's our caption page. Now I do want to remove this page number, which you can just manually delete it if you want. But heaven forbid, you should have to go through that. Uh, we do have a macro to remove the page one page number, so that just took that out off the caption page. Sorry, I'm scrolling wildly. Here's my table of contents, and you can see 
we have the lowercase Roman numeral, page numbering, table of authorities. These are gray because I have my computer set to always show fields shaded, but that's a, just an option I set. They won't print gray. Let me turn show hide back on, get rid of this extra little hard return. And now things have changed. Let me get rid of those. I should do a macro to run through and remove all of those. Note to self. Okay, there you go. It's that simple. But what if it's not that simple? What if you have decided that this formatting is a little bit much? Maybe we don't really want all this bold and underline. I would just like level 2 to be bold. I don't want it underline. Well, with the quick numbers, there are several macros for making changes. And sometimes the changes are very simple, like I don't want level 2 to be underlined. You can click in any paragraph in the document that has the outline level you want to change. Go to this level and make the change you want. Mo the common things that people do we should have in here. So I just turned underlining off for that and you can see throughout the entire document wherever I use level 2 the underlining is off. And then with level 1, um, I know you wouldn't do this, but just to give you an example, let's say you want to say 1, 2, 3 instead of using the Roman numerals, or maybe you want the Arabic uh, 1, 2, 3. You can go to Number and make changes. Like in a transactional document, you might see Article 1 or Section 1, that type of thing. Here I'll just do the 1, 2, 3 that I mentioned just because it's kind of different. Why not? You can see it made that change. Now I realize that I lost my mind temporarily. So let's go back, get rid of that. I'll just put this back the way it was. But whatever changes you want to make, you can make in here. And then, if you'd like to save your changes for future use, you go back to Quick Numbers, choose where we chose the outline, and here you can give it a name. I'll just name this test. And I'll tell it when I press enter, I want to switch to the body text style. I don't know if I, I think I pointed that out. When you press enter, it switches you out of the outline. That's just the pleading outlines that do that. The other outlines will give you the next number, like one, two, three, A, B, C. I'll say create outline. It's done. Very good. Now in the future, in any document, I can use that outline. I'll run another pleading. I'll just do a regular pleading this time to give you an idea of some of the options. So here's a regular pleading. I won't fill everything out. The main thing is, I just want to show you, and I can go to Quick Numbers and choose just from the personal, and here are the ones I've done. Here's tests that I just did. Say OK. Level 1. Level 2. And so on and so forth.